hello everyone. Uh, I hope you are doing well and are having a great time at this conference so far. Uh, my name is Charles. Uh, I'm a student here in Paris. I work essentially with uh, React Native and a tiny little bit of Reasonable uh, lately. And today I'll be talking about uh, declarative data fetching in React applications. So taking a step back uh, two years ago, I realized that I had two major points where I'd like to improve my developer experience. Uh, the first one was how I would handle navigation inside mobile applications, and the other one uh, was data fetching. And actually, I did have uh, the opportunity to address the former uh, last year on this very stage uh, when I announced a library I'm working on with a friend uh, called uh, React Router Navigation. So basically, it's a navigation library for React Native uh, built on top of um, React Routers API. So instead of using a lot of functions, uh, basically you just need uh, components to create uh, your navigation and, su and we do support all the native like animations and everything. And today I'd like to address uh, the later, uh, which is data fetching. And by the title of this talk, uh, you can see that I see two different ways uh, to perform data fetching in React. You can either go the imperative style or the declarative style. So I know these may be terms you've already heard a lot by now, uh, but allow me to just briefly go through each one of them. So if we take uh, the first one, for instance, uh, Axios, which you might already be familiar with, is probably the most commonly used solution to do that. Uh, so basically, you just use different functions and then tell your code how to get uh, the data you want. <coughs> The declarative style, on the other hand, uses a different approach. Uh, to give you a concrete example, the first result that pops up on NPM uh, when you look for uh, declarative data fetching is actually a React prefetch built by the folks at Heroku. And this is what I consider to be the main difference uh, between imperative and declarative. Here, it's more about telling your code what you want to get access to instead of how you want it uh, through this higher order component. But I know at this point there might be some people in the audience that feel I've just left out because as Peggy said, it's 2018, I'm just about function and everything, but where are the render props? Well, turns out uh, the latest version of uh, React Apollo, as she mentioned, uh, got us covered here uh, with a great use case, a uh, great example for the use case. Uh, so you might already be familiar with uh, GraphQL and uh, React Apollo in general, but for those who are not, uh, here's how you can perform the, exam, uh, the exact same user fetching with this tool. And as we can see here, uh, by using this technique, uh, we don't only get access to more convenient code, at least in my opinion, uh, but we also have access to more features uh, like loading and error, for instance. And I took Apollo as an example, but the same thing applies with uh, the query renderer uh, from Relay. And I don't know about you, but I really like the idea to just ditch functions uh, in favor of just using a simple components. But there's a trap in what I just said. If React, Apollo, and Apollo client are meant to be used uh, with a GraphQL API, how are you supposed to use this kind of cool component with like uh, errors and loading states at your disposal, but with the REST API this time? Well, we know that since Apollo Client 2.0, uh, we can really easily plug a REST API uh, through Apollo Link uh, REST. But unfortunately, I couldn't use GraphQL at all on the project I was working on at that time. And I didn't find any solution uh, that allowed me to, to do that for REST API. So that's why after a few months of work and uh, like writing some code and rewriting the whole thing the day after, uh, I came up with something I am really excited about and published a few days ago. So folks, allow me to reintroduce you React Data Fetching, a library for data fetching in React. So I designed React uh, Data Fetching to bring into the REST realm uh, some of the great features uh, we get with the React Apollo components we just saw. So it works out of the box anywhere uh, React is running, and so which means you can use it like in any React web, React native, or even Preact applications, for instance, uh, without any extra configuration. 
And with regular fetching, everything is just a matter of props. I uh, don't need like complex functions or whatsoever, just props, and that's it. So here we have a quick side-by-side -side and completely biased comparison uh, where you can see a rag data fetching in action. And I want to point out the fact that the two snippets I'm showing you uh, look quite, uh, they look quite similar. Uh, in fact, you have access to the same uh, loading error and data variables, even if they rely on two completely different query languages, which is something I find really awesome, uh, to be honest with you. So the library gives you access to a lot of props to handle your different use cases. Uh, but if you happen to need a good old function to do the job, you also have access to request to API, uh, which against all odds performs a request to an API. Uh, so this one was pretty hard to name. And the function actually accepts a single object as an argument and you just pass all the parameters you need for your call and that's it. However though, if you are eager to go down this rabbit hole, uh, React Data Fetching offers you one more thing, uh, which is the fetch provider. Actually, it allows you uh, to share some props or among like all your fetch instances sorry, um, by wrapping your whole application, uh, just like you do with the Redux provider, for instance, uh, which can really be time saving when you don't want to repeat the same logic in your code over and over. And if we take a step back uh, here, uh, the thing I'm really trying to get through to you is how easy it becomes uh, with a declarative approach uh, to just decide what you want instead of wasting your time uh, defining how you want things to get done, even in REST now. So the project is already available on GitHub. Uh, I want to make sure that this appears awesome. Uh, if you want to contribute or just give it a try. Uh, there's also a more detailed article on Medium uh, when you find some explanations about uh, the library, how the library uh, was designed this way. And last but not least, I really wanted to uh, take the time to thank these three wonderful uh, persons uh, who have already been working on the project, uh, sending pull requests, uh, fixing issues, implementing uh, new features. So huge thank you uh, to them. So well, I wish you a very nice and warm stay in Paris. Uh, we are very lucky this year. We have a great weather outside, which is pretty cool. And feel free to just come after and talk to me if you are interested about all this stuff or just want to chill in the city. So that's all from me uh, for today, folks. Uh, thank you all for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you.